Oh, yeah, yeah. Welcome, welcome to the LDM show. Another week with my boy here, Will Davis from XY101. What's up, folks? So, what's going on? Another week. Man. Another week. Uh, found Another out. Cold. No, no, no. I found out I, I passed the police exam. So that's ah, the yes. Plus. Um, I got a new job. There we go. There we so, go. So, some positive things. Positive. Just, Those are great things. Yeah, yeah. Ooh. How about po- you? Pos- positive is when you're taking the blood test and stuff. This is great. <laughs> this is great news. <laughs> Depending on the test, you may not want to be positive. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> that is, you know, it's good. You know, we're still uh, pushing on a little slow start from, you know, that vacation we had. Yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. But now we have to go full blown. Okay. But other than that, it, besides the cold, it's like. Trying to shake it off. Hey, you know what? Is, I, is it me or this year is like more bone chilly? It, it's hidden harder because the winter really wasn't winter in December. Like, I don't remember really feeling cold air until, until January. Until now. Like, yeah. I'm it's like, very wow. And that wind is, like, oh, and it's not cold. It's just like it feels like it's on your bones right? and everything. It's like. But, but this is the part that bogs me out. What's today? February, you know that? No, no, no. no. It's the beginning of February. What is the beginning of February? Oh, it's supposed to be spring. No. Black History Month. How are you going to give the coldest dang month oh! to people who can't stand the cold? See, it's so short, I forgot about it. I'm that short. It's <laughs> <messed up. laughs> yeah, right? We even get the cold in the day. What, what, what are they doing to us? Like, come on, where's, what's going on? Oh, man. No, no. Yeah, that's not that. That's not bueno. That's no bueno. No <laughs> bueno right all. there. <laughs> always bugs me out. The yeah. February hits, the really hits me like, dang. We supposed to be celebrated in this weather? And I'm born in this month. I, no. no, but I like the February, March night weather. It feels like you can, you know, used to. And now maybe, it's like maybe mad at cold. the ending of the month come Pisces season, but we still on the Aquarius side. This oh, still yeah. sucks. I don't know. This, this one is still my snow. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, that's true. You know, people be like, oh, put the shovels away. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. No, mm-hmm. they waiting for you to put it away. Yeah. You know, take the gas out of the mm-hmm. uh, the, the snowmobiles and all that. They waiting then, for that. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yep. Yep. <laughs> hey, thank you uh watching from oh from Twitch TV. Hey. So thank you. Uh yeah, it's cold. That, and like I, I was like walking, I'm like, damn, is this just me? Like because you know I came from a hot place. Right. But then I'm like, no, no. I don't remember it this cold. It's really cold. Oh, yeah, but you know what? When you left, it was still kind of warm here. Yeah. Yeah, no. <laughs> we we had in fact after you left, we had a whole week of like sixty degree weather. And then I timed it so when I get back, it's going to be warm. Nope. And I didn't time it right. Nah, you should have timed it for June. I, I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> Wrong J month, my friend. All right, right. But uh, ladies and gentlemen, we've got a good show for you. Uh, you know, there's two guys here, so we're going to be having some good guy talk here. Okay. You know, a little preview of when we do have guy talk with the panels and all that. Full segment. Oh, full segment and stuff. And then the girls can't keep up when they got their girl talk. I don't really care anyway, but, well, you know. Real, real quick, did the... Uh, did, did you watch the Rumble? Oh, I was going to talk about that today. Oh, okay. I was, yeah. was, 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 was going to leave the bad news for last. But bad since, news? But since you won't bring the bad news Ooh, now. Bad I, news. I didn't like the Rumble. Which one? The, the girls were good. But I'm That's about the one I didn't like. The overall, to me, okay. I gave it like a three out of five. Dang. That's how low I gave it. Two Rumble matches and you give it a three? Three. And the only good match to me, because you didn't see how many mistakes the guys made. Did you see how many mistakes the girls made? Well, I was not really looking at okay, some of the see, girls' you, um, mm, mistakes. Mm. You, I was watching their their their, their yeah, athleticism. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. They, oh, they athletic. Yeah, you know what I say. The splits and all. Yo, yeah, come on now. Um, no, but they did more like uh, damaging moves. And so, the guys were like a little laid back Look, for me. The only there were only two highlights for me in the female Royal Rumble, and one of them was very much expected. That was Jade Cargill. Finally making her debut. I don't if anyone No, and made her debut and not coming back for a while. That's fine. That's that's something she that Brock Lesnar, but no, no, but that's I need to see more of her though. No, then you go and watch replays of AEW. All right. <laughs> no, but I, I oh you, you were talking about wrestling. I was talking about something. Oh, Any, anyway, yeah, no. <laughs> she is not Bianca Belair. <laughs> no, oh no, oh, oh no, she's not. But no, but then the other thing was I was you know, actually that's a good tag team. I would I would watch them. I would watch. Them that would be a yeah. good tag team right there. But they're not going to last long. The the the, the Egos. Well, I know, and but I'm just saying, at yeah. least until they win, and then they be like, we won because of me. No, I won. And then, you know, later on, they break but, up. But, I mean, when you, when, you, when you put a tag team together like that, isn't that like when no one could believe that Undertaker and Kane would lose? Yeah, and, and then they, and they, they lost. Uh, yeah. Yeah. But, so. 
But uh, the other thing was Jordan Grace. Cause, see, I've been following her. Because you see her now, and she's all jacked up in this and this. Oh, dirt. my gosh. She I've wasn't been, like that. I've been following her since she was this pudgy little thing that used to do nothing but, like, low-circuit wrestling here in the New York tri-state area. Mm-hmm. Right? You see her in maybe PA, CT, New Jersey, New York. And uh, she traveled out of Ohio to come over here with, like, and in her car for a while. And she used to live in Jersey, right? I remember following her then on social media and to see her go become a major independent star. You know, they, they were willing to put, you know, TNA on her back. Mm-hmm. And then they liked her so much that when they brought over Trinity back, they said, and the person who just took your title come to. Yeah. I was so proud for her in that moment because I've, se- I've seen how far she's come. And shout out years. to both of them because they went, did Impact. Did AEW and then did WWE, mm-hmm. but to me WWE only bring them because they went to the special on um, Impact and AEW. Yeah, no, they so realized- they were like, oh wait, we don't want to feel uh, uh, left out. Mm-hmm. But no, I, that, but that was, was a great highlight for me. Yeah. Other than that, I, I can't be happy. Bailey won. And, oh, and, that, was, know, that was that was I I I won. We already knew that was something that could happen. Mm-hmm. Like it was very much like because they, she's going for uh, the the whole triple crown. Whatever. Mm-hmm. But but the, for me, what made me not even like it more wasn't even like how it was done, but more so the post interview where Triple H kind of explained why it was given to her, and I was just like, but. No. <laughs> yeah. He was just like, she She helps push everyone else, and we wanted to remind you that she's a great wrestler kind of a thing. And I was just like... No, you could have been like, no. because it's good for the storyline. Because it is, you know? And then this girl said, you better go pick... Your, your EO. Your I'm EO Sky, you because I'm going to whip you. So maybe that's a good story, because to me, as a writer, I would have been like... Oh, don't worry, EO. I'm not gonna go for you. I'm gonna go for Ripley. Oh, good, because you you probably can't win anyway. What, what you mean I can't win? You know what yeah. I'm saying? Like, and, you know, because they've been throwing hints. Close how's it going? They're going. But uh, they've been throwing hints, and uh, I was a little disappointed on the Owens. Uh, a little. I I got it. But I I think it, he was more hurt than they were saying. The only reason I actually enjoyed that match was exactly how it ended. Because oh it, yeah yeah. Here, here's the thing, I know he's like a YouTuber and all of that, but he's entertaining. And he, he's a good right? wrestler though. He's good in the ring. Yeah. For Owens to beat him for for him to have the the uh, Paul to have the the title for only like you know, a month or two months. No, I like the fact that they let Paul keep it, but they did it in the way to let you know, like, but Owens is the real wrestler. Yeah. So the ending of the mm-hmm. matches really was the highlight for me. It wasn't it, a it, it remind me uh, of that match. What was it? Eddie, Eddie, I think, versus um, Chris. That when Eddie yes. hit the chair and he went down, the referee wasn't ready, so he got back up. And then Chris hit the chair. And <laughs> right. They went back and forth, back and forth. You great. guys are talking about WWE? Yeah. Oh, of course. yes. Of course. Yeah. Hugo, what you know about WWE? Yeah. I, are you I, a wrestler I, fan or a wrestling fan? Mm. You know? So, but uh, yeah, I think that ending was perfect. That was perfect. That was that, that for me. That's why I'm like, you giving it a three is so low. I because mean, there was only two good matches. But, okay, so. The guys match, you know what I think was missing from the guys match? There was no sh- big. There was no big yeah, pop. There, there was, I would say that Andrade might have been the biggest return. The shocker, yeah. Right, that was a shocking return, but then it led to nothing. Like, you can't really, I can't really think of a highlight moment of Andrade in that match. You know what in, I'm saying? In any of them. Like, I was like, uh, I, I, I mean, until the last four, the last four. The, and, yeah. and I was, I, I was a little disappointed that it was punk versus Rhodes. Cause it was a little too cliche, but I'm happy that they let Rhodes mm. be the guy. Cause I think everyone felt robbed when Rhodes didn't beat Roman. Right. Mm-hmm. And having him be the repeat rumble winner, like stone cold, I think makes up for that disappointment mm. and gives opportunity for him to finish the story that everyone wants. And it's been a long time. Since I felt a unanimous feeling from the WWE audience. And I think with CM Punk coming back too, he could have been the person to be like, no one wants Cody Rose anymore. And he wasn't. People still, you know, in the ring, still can't with see CM Punk. Cody. But I think just about they 90, just, you, 95% of wrestling fans who are WWE fans are rooting for Rhodes mm-hmm. to be the one to beat. I think they Rhodes. just uh, like that CM Punk came back, but they didn't want him to be getting belts and stuff like right. that. You right. Know I'm, like, I, you, nah, you ain't coming back and getting belts. I think... Setting up Punk versus McIntyre 
is a great idea because oh when he comes back right yeah. because even with cody like what do we do with cody now that the story is over and a lot of what helped build cody rhodes who's that hey oh from tw uh twitch tv um, uh dead what is it dead shark pool okay because it's so blue i yeah, can't it's blue on yeah. blue i'm like hmm? yeah. but uh, no um cody really helped build being you know the american nightmare in wwe right. by facing other like top build guys who weren't champions and i feel like that's the road cm punk can take to making people want to see him versus seth rollins but okay. no one wants him to be the guy to beat roman you know what i'm saying yeah but it, you know that's what I, what you gave it I, w I would actually give this particular pay-per-view a seven Ooh. and i know that seems a little high but for me when you have two rumbles matches Right? No, but I, I was doing it out of five. No, no, no. Oh, you're doing it out of five. I always do it out of ten. Ten. Oh, okay. So uh, then if you're doing it out of ten, I'll probably give it a six. The same. Yeah, 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 because my, my thing is, like, when you got two Rumble matches, the, the number of opportunities for failure are just insurmountable. Yeah. I mean, we saw that, uh, what was it, Tyson? I, I was just waiting for a pop. That, even with Tyson falling under, it was that, a you good know, pop. That was a big pop, right? But yeah. I'm saying the man can't even get in the ring. That's how many mistakes can happen. Yeah. I feel like there weren't a lot of mistakes that ruined what was written. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It was just some stuff that, like, you know, there you got a bunch of people running around exhausted for multiple minutes at a time. So, like, yeah. they're not going to get the right pickup. They're not going to get the right drop. They're and then you notice that the men were doing more of that, oh, when it's 10 seconds that they go to the corner and they hit yeah. and they're looking. They never hardly did that before. Yeah. You can tell the exhaustion there was were, in there. there That's why. There were a why. lot of people, I, I mean, a lot of new faces in this particular Rumble, too. Mm -hmm. I think the person who had the best performance in the Rumble stood no chance of winning, and it was Braun Breaker. Yeah. That guy made it. If, if anyone didn't know who Braun Breaker was before, and I don't know how you couldn't after he had such a great reign in NXT, mm -hmm. he made a name for himself that night. Yep. I, I want a lot more to come out of that kid. And I know they were going to move him up at one point. And then they, they, they had, no, they had to. They had to keep him back because there was nothing on NXT. And yeah. they needed a bad guy. But uh, keep watching that and keep watching us. We're going to talk more about uh, wrestling. We were just having a meeting today about the sports channel. Yeah, which yeah. The LDM Sports. LDM but uh, sports and let's get to talk. some we'll controversy. Be Let's, let's get to some controversy. All right. Whose fault is it when a woman gets pregnant? Simple. Her. Nah, hang on. We ain't saying it because it's two guys. No, but I if mean. If there's females out there, no, I want to hear your comment. My, my. Whose fault is it? Because you're the one that picked the guy, right? You're the one that decides if he's going to go in you. So you decide what goes in you. I mean, at, at the end of the day, outside of some very sad cases, right, it's normally, it's normally the woman's choice oh, what, for that. What is your favorite wrestler? Oh, okay. Um, what are, are I guess, who are? All time or currently? Or, we both. Or what are your favorite wrestlers? Like, are you talking about uh, lightweight, heavyweight, or are you talking about who are your favorite wrestlers? Um, explain a little bit more, and then we'll go back to that question. Mm -hmm. But uh, to me, like I was saying, like, if you're allowing the, the yeah. person to go in without, it's your fault. In most cases, it's a woman's choice to who she's going to, you know, right. sleep with. Unless something you, that you know, big anyway, R right? happened to you. But so in, in that particular case, if, you know, you're letting the person in, are you, are you telling them to wrap up? Are you not? You mm -hmm. know, in, in cases where it breaks, I mean, that's no one's fault, but, you know, Trojan. Um, <laughs> but, like, yeah. you, you get what I'm saying? Like, it, Nine, nine out of ten times, it's your decision, like he said, what's entering you. So if, if you get pregnant, that's on you. The, the other reason I say it is more so post you actually getting knocked up. But the man can say. Oh, all time. Okay, so all time wrestler. For me, it's The Rock. I, I got to go with Eddie. I got to go with Eddie. I'm not mad at that either. Eddie's because probably the reason half these people are wrestling now. Just because of the <laughs> entertainment side. Yeah, no, no, no. Yeah, he, he was so entertaining. He was good in the ring. He was good on the mic. Mm -hmm. and, and, I mean, just physical performance, he was just the life of the party. Everything yeah. he did was larger than who he was. That's why they couldn't deny him the belt after a while. Yeah. And you know Vince didn't like the smaller guys having the title, but yeah, no yeah. one was mad when Eddie got it. And even behind the, behind the scenes, he was... He wasn't exactly Undertaker as the wrestler's wrestler, but he was someone that most wrestlers could get along with and respect mm. as a craftsman. So yeah. he's an all-time great for sure. He'd have to be in just about everybody's top ten if he isn't in their oh, top five it, or top three. You know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah, he's like, automatically yeah. The Rock and, and Eddie's in the top five. Have to. Have to have be. To. You don't have to like The Rock now, but as an actual, just taking his time as a wrestler, yeah, I love him. The mouth. 
uh, uh, the engineer said Stone, Stone Cold. Cold. Well, yeah. that's a top five. You got he, my top five would be Undertaker, mm-hmm. uh, Stone Cold, Rock, Eddie Guerrero, and I'm a little twisted between uh, Ray Mysterio and mm. uh, if you say Batista, Ricky, no, no, Ricky Dragon. the Dragon Steamboat. Okay, like because who, who they both, be yeah, because they both had that uh, twine to them, like. When they come out of the ring, everybody's paying attention to them, you know? Okay. Like, Ricky the Dragon Steamboat, once that dragon sound come out and... You're ready, yeah. Everybody was like, boom, you That's know? true, because you know what? If you really want to talk about those are the greatest theme songs, Rey Mysterio, just when you hear that... Before they even get to the Booyaka, like, everybody's just like, oh, he's coming, he's coming. And he used to come out with the whole jumping up with the sparks. That was the best entrance Yeah. of his. I I I, nah, I liked it that one. You know you know dang well the best entrance was Melina. Let's let's talk about it. With Melina? Oh yeah, remember that? When oh. she used to do the split in the ring. Oh <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> that was the best entrance. Yeah, that's the best girl entrance. <laughs> hey, this is guy talk. You know we're gonna go back to that. We're gonna go back to those things, you know. But uh, <laughs> but back to the the female question. Uh, if if any female in there wants to debate us. Nah, Dolph Ziggler is the GOAT. Oh, no. You know what? He's good, but he... I, well... I'm going to say Dolph Ziggler... He's in the pro- top 10, no, no, but not the top 5. I, mean, I wouldn't put him in my top 10, but I would easily say he might be in the top 5 of people who are underrated. Like, yeah. every... I think everyone... Like the Miz, right? A lot of people and to the new to the new group to the millennials right. and stuff like but that. But a lot of a lot of people sleep on his accomplishments. A lot of people sleep Come on. on his in ring performance. Intercontinental a lot of uh, continental champion, champion. Uh, oh, tag he, team. He, he was a heavyweight champion. He, heavyweight. Uh, he, he's won just and, and in WWE. I think he won everything but the actual WWE title. If I'm not mistaken. Yeah, because uh, that title just came out a couple years ago when they had him pushing people over. Yeah, exactly. But, well, all but he saying, won every single title all on All I'm it. saying is Dolph Ziggler has one of the best resumes in WWE and out of WWE. Mm-hmm. And because he's not one of the big guys, they all sleep on him. And amazing on the mic. Probably one yeah. of the best people out there to go. Like, I would put him up on the level of Chris Jericho as right. far as being able to entertain the audience on the mic. Like, but the, the, reason, why, very, very the reason why I won't really probably put him on my top 10 is I'll be here for five, 10 minutes and you probably can't tell me a big match that you remember of his because it's kind of hard. And, that, and that's the thing. Exactly why I'm saying he's one of the most slept on. Mm-hmm. Despite all of his accomplishments, a lot of people sleep on him because there's just something about him, his matches, maybe his title reigns in specific. They don't remember it. They don't remember him as good as he actually is. Yes, and that's the, same, the problem. It, it was the same issue that Wade Barrett had, right? This mm, guy yeah. this guy had accomplishments. This guy was, I mean, even from his earlier days was teamed up with people and whatnot uh, where they were big. Uh, um, Dolph Ziggler was one of the cheerleading guys who dominated mm. WWE at one point as like a group of 20, like, what, right? What was the... Uh... The cheer squad. The cheer squad. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like, but this is what I'm saying. There are so many highlights. If we actually sit there and think about Dolph Ziggler, yeah, he's a great. He can, I can see him being someone's favorite because he has the resume behind mm-hmm. it. But am but I he putting him in my him. top ten? He because, doesn't have the memory. Because I know more people who forget about him than remember him. Mm-hmm. So I, that, I, that's I respect what, that's, it. I'm not going to yeah. tell you he's not the GOAT. If he's your favorite, I yeah. get it because that man was one of the top performers of all time, and I will agree to that, but... And he's I wish him all the luck, you know, and, and well, he's an impact, right? Yeah, right now, yeah. yeah. So I wish him all the luck. Uh, he is good, but he's, like we're trying to say, like, memorable. Even, even people that start watching wrestling now and catch up, like, they go back in the right. old, they, they're they gonna, don't remember. They're going to sleep on yeah. him. They're going to. And it's unfortunate because he's that damn good. Yeah. It was just something about his matches. Like, that's why I said, I'm like, I don't even remember his championship run. Right? It's like, it's like being Christian to Edge. Yeah. Right? And, and, and don't get me wrong, both great as a tag team, everybody talks about them, but who really talks about Christian as just Christian? And mm-hmm. he's held a bunch of individual titles, he's been the guy in a bunch of different leagues, but everybody remembers Edge. Yeah. The only, thing, <laughs> right? the only so, thing I remember of Christian's single time was One More Try. That's true, One More Try. You don't remember his ECW reign? No. Yeah, see, you see what I'm saying? I don't. I know he had a reign. <laughs> but you don't remember... And this is a, this is a guy who you see how Bobby Lashley comes in wherever he goes he's the big brawl dude but Ed, but but Christian used to fight him all the time in mm-hmm. ECW on equal standing and beat him and nobody talks about Christian as Christian mm-hmm. 
It's Edge and Christian all it's the time. Edge and Christian. All the time. Or just Edge. No one talks about Christian, and it's unfortunate. And that's why I love AEW, how they're doing that battle, mm-hmm. you know, with the ego. And, I, and you know what? They mm-hmm. used to say the same thing about Matt Hardy, but I feel in the latter part of his career, especially with Jeff's problem, he's been able to become Matt Hardy. Yeah. And then eventually when he, when he had the full stint over an impact and was broken Matt, you know what I'm saying? Like, at least later in life, we can later. talk about... Matt Hardy as Matt Hardy and Jeff Hardy as Jeff Hardy and the Hardy Boys all as separate things. Christian doesn't have that that opportunity. Yeah. yeah. Devon doesn't have that opportunity. Absolutely. <laughs> right. We have to talk about the Dudley Boys to talk about Devon, but we don't have to do the same thing for Bully Bubba Ray. Yeah. So. Yeah, it, it's it's hard when that's why I ask, are you a wrestling fan or a wrestler fan? When you're a wrestling fan, we look at it overall mm-hmm. of everything, you know. When you have a favorite wrestler, you're going to be the person who can highlight every reason why that person is great. And you know what? You're not wrong. I, I will completely agree with you. Dolph Ziggler, one of the best of all Oh, time. yeah. If, if, if you were to tell me you wanted to, to go accomplishment for accomplishment with a lot of guys current, currently going, back in the day in the 80s, Attitude Era, he has... He's like LeBron James to Michael Jordan, right? You can have all the stats in the world, but at the end of the day, the GOAT is, is Jordan, right? The GOAT right. will always be someone other than the person with the accolades because of the member, like their influence, the impact that they had mm-hmm. on the league, on the sport, on sports in general, right? Like, you know, a lot of these guys used to talk crap about The Rock and then realize that what he did for WWE by stepping out of WWE. Yeah. Right? He, he <laughs> actually pushed WWE more not even being there. Like, as weird as that is, you know what I'm saying? So you, when we have these conversations about talking about the entirety of, of, of the, thing. The, the league, the industry, and the, and the person, and what they brought to it. So. Yeah. Well, you just got to look when you're doing, because I don't think there's a, a, like Undertaker said, there's no such thing as a GOAT in wrestling, because yeah. everybody has their certain uh, impact that they did. But if you're going to do a top 10, you got to look at the overall. Bro. Like Ultimate Warrior. I mean, he had a great run, but do I put him on my top tens? Maybe not. A lot of people who would put Ultimate Warrior in their top would do it because they were there during the run. Yeah. That's, I mean, that's point blank period. But he's another one. The only one that you remember is the uh, Hulk Hogan fight. Okay. Yeah. Name me another fight. But, but the whole thing is, is that in his particular case, the only reason why I'm not going to dispute it too much is because of how they killed him. You, yeah. know what, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. he, he, was so, he would have probably who, been. He's someone who could have been bigger. He's someone who could have been what Sting eventually became, right? Mm-hmm. But they cut him. They, yeah. they, they, they shot down that opportunity. So if you're someone talking about the run, if you're someone talking about what he should have been, yeah. I'm not going to go back and forth with you so much because that was someone with a lot of promise. Yeah, and as soon as you hear that, everybody's screaming and yelling. And for but a lot of people, that since, intro is everything. Since he didn't have that longer run, mm-hmm. a lot of people forgot. All his matches. So, So. you know, we watch it. But uh, we're going to get to another uh, topic here as well about stepfathers I wanted to talk about. I seen a a line where the video, I mean, Mm -hmm. the guy did not want to go out with the kid. Okay. And the girl was getting mad and saying, well, if you're going to be with me, you have to go hang out with him and everything. He was like... I ain't going to be a stepdad. I'm going to be um, his uh, mom's boyfriend. If you want me to be a stepdad, I can't go hang out with him because I'm not going to break up with you, and then now I'm not going to see him no more. Mm. The girls trashed him, of course. Of course. Oh, but if you're going to be with the girl, you should be with him. You should hang out with him. But then the guys were like, he has a point. And as a man, I'm going to tell you the point. When you have someone as your stepchild and you you investing investing in this Mm -hmm. um child for years and years and years and all of a sudden the father come back give him a little teddy bear or something i don't know like a little toy and all of a sudden boom you're out the picture again or she gets mad and leaves you and then talking about you can't come and see my kids i mean at the at the end of the day what we're talking about is until he's sure that he's making you his his wife, right? Like, right, right. Like he doesn't really want to. Develop, oh yeah, that's another thing too. They wasn't he even married. Want to develop that bond with the kid because at at this point, until I know that I'm making this long term investment with you, 
why mm -hmm. am I also investing in this other person that can so easily be gone, right? Because you can easily be gone yeah. right now. You're not mm -hmm. my fiance even. You're not my wife for sure. So now we're even tied up legally when you're my wife. But like, there's no long term investment here. Like, I'm here. I'm dating you. I'm trying to get to know you. And when I've determined mm -hmm. that I like you enough to make this a permanent thing, then mm -hmm. let's start developing this. And I'm not even saying that I'm going to propose to you and then meet your kid. I'm saying that I need to know that you are my forever before I invest fully into all that is you. You know what I'm right. saying? And e even in that point, it's still kind of hard because yeah. it can be 10 years from now and y'all break up and then sometimes the kids you know, are know, automatically going to take their real parent's side. Well, what, what I have noticed in you know, personal world stuff is that when you have someone who was the long-term boyfriend, fiance, even stepdad as far as, you know, became the mm -hmm. husband, right? If they really were there all those years, especially if the kid was younger when the relationship started and then whatever, um, even when the parents break, the kid usually maintains that relationship with the adult, right? Right. Like, normally, that's it's, how that it's, works it's in cases. To be. And I right? think it's an age thing. It depends on it where, too, it where. Because it's not like, you know, this is a 17-year-old kid and I'm just starting in the relationship with you and now you want me to hang out with your 17-year-old kid. And I think, I think honestly, more of the guys wouldn't mind if the kid was older because the kid, it's not really, it doesn't mean anything to the kid, it doesn't mean anything to you, you know, mm -hmm. like, so you want me to just take him to the game or something? Like, because yeah. now I can do something and, that and, I can and enjoy. And, and another, and uh, for females, Depending on how long you've been with the guy. Mm -hmm. Don't be like, hey, take my son out. Because now, to me, it's going to be forcing, like, you're trying to force me to be a dad right. to him. And I haven't even met your parents. So it's not, you know what I mean? Like, right. stuff like that. Like, I, I, this is the whole thing. Even when you are a single parent, right? And I'm not going to put this on just single mothers, but also single fathers, right? You're forgetting that there are some normal rules uh, and traditions and things mm -hmm. in dating that, yeah, I, I haven't met, your, like, if, if it wasn't just meet my kid, but meet my family, mm -hmm. I think it would be a little less awkward than, like, just meet my kid or just meet my parents. And you're just like, yeah. Oh, something's off here. Like, something's missing. So there's, there's that aspect of it, too, right? Like, you said, I didn't even meet your parents. Why am I just hanging out with your kid? Like, you because if you, if you, like, if you say, hey, I want you to meet my parents, and a guy's voice is, oh, my gosh, she wants to marry me already. Sometimes, yeah. Right? Oh, come take my son out or my daughter out with you wherever you're going to go, you know, bond. Oh, wow, she wants me to be a father already. So these are the things that we think about. And as a female, mm -hmm. you need to understand that's what they think about. So by you pushing them to them, they're not going to want to do it. And, the other aspects, and then did you ask the, even the kid? If, yeah, is the kid even interested? Like you know. you're forcing the kid to, to, to bond with him and maybe he's still in his mindset yeah. of I don't like any guy with you. Right. And, and or, I, you know, it should only just be my dad with you. So you right. have to also it, it's, you got to take the kid into account heavily because the other thing, too, is that a lot of people will bring someone around their kid and their kid gets used to seeing this as a revolving door of individuals because, mm -hmm. you you know, the parent may be invested wholly into something because they're really looking for something long term so they can find a support to build this family environment for their child. Understood, I get it, conceptually, mm -hmm. right? But be it a single father, single mother, bring around too many women, bring around too many guys, mm -hmm. you know? It, it becomes something where the kid now may interpret that that's what they're supposed to do, just have people yep. frequently in and out their life. They may not want to get close to anyone. They might start building attachment issues. So you have to consider that it's a full scope, not just between you and the individual, but what's going on with your kid? What are you bringing around your kid? Yep. I, would, I would hope that anybody who brings around somebody around their child is not bringing around somebody early into it. They should be very much assured that sure. this is someone that they're going to have around a long time. The kid shouldn't yeah. be the test to yeah, have yeah, someone around you a long time. You know what I'm saying? If, if you tell the kid, what do you tell the person when you see them? Are you my daddy? Then you know you're doing something wrong. Dang. <laughs> you brought it back to the 90s. You get it right? Oh, I bring it yeah. back to the show. Dang. You know, bring it back to the hood show. You know, but like when I was single too, a lot of females were like, oh, can I go to you? Nope. Mm -hmm. Why? My kid is, is, is home this week. Oh, I would. Nope. As soon as they say, yeah. oh, I would. I don't even let them finish. Nope. No. You're not going to. But, you know, we, we've been seeing each other for two months. And in my mind, I said, yeah, I know. You only got one more month. <laughs> you know, I had a three-month thing. You know, right. Because after three months, either you know you're going to be with this person for a long not. time or you're not. And I don't got time to waste. But that's, and that's the whole thing. That's what I'm saying. You shouldn't. You, you seeing how they interact with your kid should not be the test mm -hmm. for the relationship. Nope. Right? You should know that I want a relationship with this person and now we're trying to figure out how 
you know, to integrate this guy into my family, mm -hmm. you know, like, or this girl into my family. Because I don't, I don't think this is a fair question just to say to single mothers. I mean, I mean, just yeah, yeah, that's why I say single yeah. um, and, um, any, parents. Any single parent, like, that is, that is the scenario. You should be invested in the person before you bring them to the kid. You should also make sure that your kid is open to you having a person, mm -hmm. right? Because I know there's eventually that point where, like, you know, the relationship needs to find out if it's going to be long term. And your kid's gonna have to accept something they may not be happy with. That's that is yeah. an option that will happen down the road, but you need to be that heavily invested yeah. in that relationship. And, and I tell you this much: uh, never have the person come to your house to get to know your kid, because yeah. that makes, especially a man, you're never gonna be like, "Come over," because now the kid is gonna be feeling like, "Okay, that's my father. That's supposed to be," you know, because he's sitting right, in right. the couch, no. he's watching the TV. Mm -hmm. he, you, and, and automatically you're trying to be nice to the guy, so you're going to bring him a drink. You're right. going to bring him a food. So that's a father status. If you want him to meet your child, go, go out. Go to the park. Go, go out. see a movie. Hey. Go, go, just, I mean, the, I, I hate that people like to put on how high a value a date is, but like literally just have an outing where you go to a restaurant. Yeah. You can learn a lot about somebody. And then you, you can just take your child, child with you. No, that's what I'm saying. Bring the kid with you and all you go out to Pizza Hut and see what happens. You but know not, what I'm saying? Not, not every week. Not every one, week. But once I'm, a month. I'm just you saying, know, just, just try to... it out. It doesn't have to be a full on like he needs to take everybody out and, and you go into the you know the carnival this whatever it doesn't have, it doesn't have to be a kiddie event mm -hmm. it doesn't have to be an adult thing something as simple as a meal people forget how important meals are because when families that eat together stay together mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying like that's, that, that's a real thing I I'll be like listen you want you want me to meet your kid I used to always do this all right let's go to the park with your kid and we can sit down and watch him play because if that kid runs around and your and the mother says something and he starts screaming and yelling i'll be like you know what i think i have a, mm. you know mm. because that means i'm not going to be dealing with no bratty no. kid so no. at the same time you know i'm sorry to say it like that but we have a choice it's a smart move too because when you do have a child that's like that especially a child that let's just say they haven't learned their manners mm -hmm. right and then you, and you can't say nothing to them. You can't because it's not your kid. And then if you do, the problem that happens between you and your partner, just like, do you see how you raised them? And you, you have an issue with me right now? Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And so. then that, that's another thing. Like, after a while, all of a sudden, that one moment, don't do that. You don't be screaming at my right. kid. Right. And you're um, just like. We've been together for like 1,500 years already. Like, you know what I mean? But it's still your stepson. So, so that's the problem with, yeah. with that. But Yeah, because whoever is stepping in without any you know, blood ties always has to play a specific position. There's mm -hmm. a way to go about it, whatever. And if you're going to be tiptoeing or you're going to be asking someone to tiptoe like that, you better be sure that it's a thing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, sure. Especially a female. If you want a stepdad, he has to be a dad. You can't just be like, he's a stepdad to be there, but don't tell my kid why not to no. do. It doesn't work that way when it's not. Because after a while, the kid can be running around with a knife. I ain't saying nothing. He going to fall. Look at, the, look, at the, look at the cable. And then, and then I knew he was going to fall. Why didn't you say nothing? <laughs> not you, my kid. Not my kid. You right? keep telling me you not to say nothing. Me. Yeah, all right. So you, you're going to wind up hitting the, uh, the corner. And it's, it's not a great thing, especially with a kid. And you're playing with a kid's feeling, like you said. Right. You know, it, it, it can hurt him in the long run or even in the short run. You know? So you have to watch it, especially with a female. I, I think that's the number one thing, too, that a lot of um, single parents do forget is the child's feelings. And I know sometimes, you know, that shouldn't hold you back, whatever is what people are telling you. But at the end of the day, right, because kids are still learning, kids are very emotional, mm -hmm. right? They don't have the same, you know, self-inhibitors as we do. You have to make sure that your kid is ready. They may mm -hmm. not, not to say that they're going to like a person or like the idea of a person, but that they're ready to handle right. that sort of situation. Like one of these, I don't like it, but since it makes you happy, I'm good. You know, like even when, if they, no, but even when if he's don't, that ready. Right. When he's that but, ready. But like even if they don't like the person or they don't like what's going on, but a kid who can fully, you know, explain why they don't like the person, mm -hmm. right? Rather than a kid who's just like, it's just not my dad. That's not yeah. what you want. No. <laughs> like especially that's, if, that's you have, you especially if you have a little girl. People don't realize little girls are more attached to a parent. Mm -hmm. It can be a male or the female. A boy, eh, he'd be like... I be hating when they be like, oh, yeah, boys always run to uh, a male figure. No, they don't. They don't run to their mama. No, so they, they probably run to boys. mama maybe. or if, And sometimes they don't even run to none of them. But a female, a little girl, if they missing the mother mm -hmm. and then you bring a girl in, guess what? She's going to be attached to that one because she's missing a mother. Mm -hmm. If you bring a boy in and she doesn't have a father, she's going to be attached. to. So when it comes to a girl, you have to really watch because if not, 
you have that revolving door, mm -hmm. here goes a little girl growing up thinking she's supposed to have a revolving door. Mm -hmm. That's like they say if you get hit in front of your kids, your kids are going to think that. And that's okay. how, the, how it works. So yeah. watch what it you do. Um, especially when you have a kid. That was another um, video I seen where the girl was hanging out and they had the kid in the car. And I'm like, why would you have the kid in the car if you're hanging out in the club type of thing? This was, I forgot where it happened at, but, um, you know, thank God for a person that came out the club, noticed the kid was still in there. So, <laughs> these kids these are, are different. different. They are rude and disrespectful, so they must get, uh, how that's what I say. Yeah. That's what I said. Take them to the park. Find out how rude they are. And I'm sorry to say, even scientists said it, if you have a kid that's like four, under four years old, and very, very overweight, they are spoiled. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm telling you the truth. Name me one child that you didn't see under four years old that's very overweight, not going, ah, but I want this. Okay, here you go. I, I need that. Here you go. That, you know what? I, that's why they like that I, because I think, they yeah, got spoiled. A, a lot of those children very much, you know, and, and part of it is that what comforts them is a snack. Right, and then they do that this, to shut yeah, them up. There's, there's no um, self-restraint taught to them. Right, that, so that I'm, even true. scientists, you know, they did this uh, thing and they, they noticed mm -hmm. that it was dumb that were more spoiled than the other kids. Right. You know, and then the second group of spoiled were, were, the, were, were boys. Of course. Because the mother, if they, you know, from single parent, the mother would give them everything because they feel bad. Mm -hmm. and, and plus, remember, your first love is your mom a lot see, of people don't realize for that for me it does it doesn't surprise me but that's because culturally i know you know be, i guess because the numbers aren't as 50 50 as people would expect right right but a lot of cultures revere their their sons more than their daughters right like mm -hmm. the son is the future of the family right while the daughter is a is a burden traditionally like in a so lot that, of that's why they're more a little more so I, I think that's why males are normally spoiled right and and, then, and that's uh, why i think the girls are more attached because they're looking for that spoilness. For something. You know? I mean, at the end of the day, you know, they, what is it that they said? Only, only um, women and, and boys. Like, women, boys, and, and or women and children are the only people who are loved unconditionally. So perhaps right. boys get spoiled because eventually they're going to be conditioned to <laughs> wanting them. Yep. <laughs> perhaps. Perhaps. But <laughs> you just have to, if you're in a relationship and you don't like the child, that's your way to get out. Mm. I, I mean, get out now because it's gonna break up your relationship later. Yeah, on. I, I mean that's that's with any problem though, any major issue, right? And I hate to think, say a kid is a major issue, but the relationship with the kid or or how the kid is can be a major issue down the road. Any major yeah. issue, you see it early enough, that's when you know red flag. I gotta go. Because if you you got a guy or a girl that has like manners and they want their child to be grow grow up somewhere, right. but now you can't say nothing because that's not your kid. They're going to get upset. Mm -hmm. They're going to be like, oh, my God, here we go. I ain't taking this kid out. Mm -hmm. I ain't taking him out. Take him with you. Uh-uh. Yeah. But you're going to the mailbox. Mm, nope. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, you don't want to be around steps. a kid like that. There's 50 steps between here and the mailbox, and I'm not dealing nope, with Nope, I ain't dealing with that kid myself. screaming and talking about, can I have this, do that? No, no, no. You know, we, you, I, we, I always have a rule. Like, if I take you anywhere and you act up, that's the last time I'm taking Can you. Can you enjoy it, I'm like, until I can see that you, you got mature, then we go somewhere else. You know, like, mm -mm. you stay with the family, with the group. But you have yeah. to watch when you, when you spoil them too much. Mm -hmm. you're gonna, it's going to cost you relationships, and it's going to cost you babysitters. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. You know, it's, it has to be know. said. Sometimes a cute babysitter can fix all your problems. Who, the guy's problem? Anyone. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, you get the cute babysitter. And that's sometimes when the kid finally like has their first real crush. Oh, oh yeah, when you have act, a little boy. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like you, got, you got the cute babysitting girl mm -hmm. for the for the boy, or the cute you know babysitter boy for the girl, and the kids so are starting so to you get, act right. So you get a Chippendale, uh, a Chippendale. He about to go and hire a magic mic. <laughs> a magic mic. For, come on now. <laughs> babysit a four year old little girl, right? And not even the mother was like, no, I was going to go somewhere, but, but now, you know. So then do I need to <laughs> no, be No, no, honey, you can go by yourself. I, you you can go, you right? can go. <laughs> and we just, you know, uh, hire a Hooters for us. See, nah, we can't even do that no more because Hooters be hiring everybody now. They, yeah. they can't be selective yeah. no more. 
this thing. It's in the name, people. It's in the name. Stop looking at this. Oh, they discriminating against me because I'm the itty titty committee. You know what I mean? Yes. Yes, it's in the name. You I don't mean, die. South Park it, it's not called it. Honker. Uh, uh, it's called Hooters. It's called Hooters. Yeah, I mean, what is it? I think South Park did their version of it because it was like the the um the young girls. So they called it Raisins. <laughs> See, it's in the name. <laughs> not plums, right? No, 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 just raisins. <laughs> See, at least if you had a plum, you had something. But you got dried up, and it just became a raisin. <laughs> but I know people watch it like, these two guys are oh, something I'm just, else. I'm just saying, you know, the media is out there. I just report on it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I did have another uh, question out here. Uh, can you name a job position that people change the title just to make themselves look bigger Janitor. or better? Janitor? Maintenance assistant. Oh, yeah, I forgot that. Secretary, administrative assistant. Assistant. Oh, we could go. Me, when I was a copy boy, I was a a duplication engineer. See, there you go. (laughs) There you go. Security guard, security officer. Yes, sir. Oh, yeah. And and then, yeah, then they give them the NYPD badges (laughs) and all this. You know, making it look job. You're a meter maid. Meter maid. (laughs) You're a meter maid, bro. New York City Police Department (laughs) ticket agent. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Oh, my God. (laughs) <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like you could you could think of a couple different titles. Yeah. Oh, oh, oh. CEO. Mm. Scammer. Just a, yeah, <laughs> it's a scammer. Just, same thing. It's the same right? thing. But because I, I, I thought about this question because I was watching a, a game show mm-hmm. and they asked everybody what they do. This girl came out and said, I'm a professional nanny. I was like, what? She the? said maid. She a maid then. A professional nanny. There ain't no professional. You don't got to. What well, you went to school for that? You got a grade? No, I got some uh, some education. I mean, you know what? Nowadays, an all pair is someone that gets hired because they can't speak English, right? Yeah, so, but you don't know. You know, it's a different kind of education. Like, listen, um, I took four years to learn how to sit down and watch this kid. That's and, called. And feed him. Wait, 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 wait. That's called a nursery school teacher. Oh, okay. <laughs> I mean, I don't mean any disrespect. I'm just saying, like, there are people who have to go to school in order mm-hmm. to work with children that young, uh, that you have to learn to feed the. I, I could not. You need to learn. You have to sit in school as an adult to learn how to teach, like, children to play with triangles. <laughs> Sesame Street does it on TV for free. What am I going to school for? YouTube. I'm just saying, right? Mm-hmm. I, I, YouTube wasn't always a thing. Sesame Street's yeah, been doing yeah. this since 1980-something, right? You go well, right there, PBS, Mr. Rogers. right there. You see what I'm saying, right? Heck, every parent that's ever existed before technology. Mm-hmm. But you have to go to school. Come on now. Come on. I learned from Mr. Rogers, take off your shoes, fold your socks. Uh, and, yeah. and I'm not trying to diss it. It is an important skill set to be able to teach the young, but do you really have to go to school for an excessive amount of time to do it? See, back in the days, and it, it was easy to... They took a class and be like, listen, this is how you throw the chancleta. When- <laughs> Yo. <laughs> if you need a class for that, you got problems. This is how you throw it. You got to, you know, pinpoint it when the kid is acting up, you know. But they had to show you how to do it when you be slick, you know. You should have learned from how, you should have learned geometry from how your abuelita was, like, whipping that around whipping. corners at you, right? Mm-hmm. Once it was about swinging bullets, she just used the, the chancla. No problem. That's what I said. They were all, they were all scientists. <laughs> You had engineers talking about 90 degrees to the right and hit this. But you know what I'm saying? They, they all did it. But uh, I, I heard so many, like, before when I was going to school, it was secretaries. Yeah. Illegal secretaries. Mm-hmm. And then now they... Paralegals. Paralegals now. <laughs> you went from secretary, legal secretary, to paralegal. But your job is still the same. But it sounds nice. Yeah, but that's what I'm saying. Like, <laughs> what other... What, what the cashiers, what they going to be? They uh, are cash transfer. No, no, engi- no, no, no. Um, the, the, They are experts. monetary exchange assistants. Oh, oh, that's a good one. That's a good one. There we go. That's a good one. Somebody's going to use that one. Yeah, I like what that. You, you work in McDonald's? Yeah, but I'm a monetary, monetary exchange, <laughs> exchange assistant. So is, what is that assistant manager or something like that? You know, so, I deal yeah, with funds yeah, yeah. And, and such. For, I, I, deal with, I do a lot of transfers. I deal with a lot of customer yeah. accounts. You know how yeah. that goes. Yeah. yeah, I do a lot yeah. of transfers, you know, here and there. So you McDonald's know. has customers? Yeah. You mean, <laughs> you mean you take the dollar every time that you order something off the dollar menu? I yeah, mean, something like that, you know, monetary customer service. You know, you know? that's exactly. Yeah, yeah. the the uh, even the even the homeless people that open the doors now they're doormen, right? No, no, because no, you know, you know what, you know, you know, why I can't let that one go because if you are a security officer, you will still not make as much as a doorman. 
Nice. They have a whole union and everything. People making hey. over 60K a year. How you doing, sir? Let right. me get that door open for you. I can do that. No, oh, they, you know what they also do? Hmm? They also do what the people at the post office do, but just for their building. Uh-huh. So they take the, the packages. I'm not saying that they don't, they don't do stuff. I but think like, they, the but they do the it The difference between a doorman and a security officer is that they actually, is, uh, surprisingly enough, they get more respect than us. Yeah, but they the, make more money and, than us. And the doorman don't have to chase nobody. And they don't have to chase nobody. They don't got to attack nobody. They don't mm-hmm. got to do nothing. But you can tell what doorman is doing their job on Christmas. If you got a lit, they're nicer than security. They they get because paid, they get paid well enough and deal with less stress than us. But that's why I was just gonna say they got the energy to be nice. How 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 you know they they are nice by their Christmas bonus? When if you got all people in the in the building giving them a little envelope, yeah. that's a good um doorman. But if you got one or two, you be like, oh man, he sucks. But but, but, here's, <laughs> but here's the other thing though, and a lot of buildings that have doormen because the expectation is that high quality service. If mm-hmm. a doorman says there's a problem. You know his bosses actually take care of that problem. Mm. So what, when what? you're a security officer, you say there's a problem. They just tell you write a report, and the issue never goes away, or never, never, you know, gets fixed. So what name should we give a doorman? A doorman, lucky son of a. <laughs> <laughs> lucky son of a. <laughs> you're lucky son of a. No. Uh, but security officers, I think we should change their name. Uh, facility. Uh, F- facility protection person? Yeah, right? Uh, 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 that sounds Rico, worse. Uh, 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 Rico? <laughs> no. Uh, Recondis? No, no. No. I mean, now they're trying Some, to say security professional. I'm like, what, the, what? Well, they're professionals. They got their certificates. No, I have my license, and you know mm-hmm. what? It means nothing. <laughs> <laughs> it means nothing. Even, even, even doctors would be like, listen, y'all are changing your names. We're going to start changing our names. You know what I mean? Oh, what are, what are doctors to about be, to become? To be, be more professional. Uh, which doctor? <laughs> Well, cause he, no, no. I feel like I feel like doctor. Pharmaceutical, like even the drug addicts are pharmaceutical <laughs> engineers. That's, that's, that's true. That's true. That's the new drug addicts. I mean, the drug dealers. The drug dealers are pharmaceutical engineers. Yeah, yep. that's true. That's true. And yeah. That's because the legal name for them in the hospitals is a pharmaceutical tech. Yep. There technician. you go. Technician. So now technician. I'm an engineer. Because you know what? The technicians distribute the meds, right? Mm-hmm. But the engineer makes it in the trap house. There you go. <laughs> so the you know. The engineers are doing their thing out there, but you know, well, we be seeing a couple of uh, techs out there. Yeah, you know? you know, a couple of techs in the streets. Yeah, there are a couple of techs <laughs> out there. So you, you know, and then you got the homeless people. It's just, uh, um, damn, that, that, we can't even Homel- get one. What, what are homeless people? Underserved Illegal immigrants. Aliens? No, they're underserved immigrants because immigrants actually get served better than them. Oh, there you go. <laughs> they the under un- underscore. The underscore of immigrants. It's, it's funny because we, we were talking about this at work the other day, right? And don't get me wrong. I get we're America. We need to be help everybody this time the third. But how can you tell me that we are spending more money on people coming here running from somewhere else, right? Making sure they're getting their Medicaid that our elderly who have paid mm-hmm. their taxes can't get. Well, making sure that they have shelters that are safe, mm-hmm. that we're not giving to the homeless that are here, many of which homeless have been turn mentally ill mm-hmm. or our prior service officers who serve the you know com- the, the right. government you know what i'm saying like you know, there's so many people from this country that can't get the services they need we're giving immigrants business loans before we're giving it to our own mm-hmm. citizens you know what i'm saying like the math just don't map i like the idea of helping others but don't they even tell you on planes don't help others so you can help yourself put your mask on first right yeah see but the, the, the thing that I, i'm not liking with this whole thing is when they say homeless they thinking about the people that are living outside in the street. Mm-hmm. What about the people that are in the shelter? The families. They're homeless. They're they don't really home. have a home. That's true. And a lot of those shelters but you're ta- you're taking aren't a, safe. Yeah, but you're taking a nice two, three-bedroom apartment and giving it to an immigrant when there was a homeless family in living shelter, in a shelter yeah. for like a two, three years already. There's a, there's a, there's a lot wrong in, in, in that system. Yeah. Shirley said there's an article saying that they will pay for a sex change for any illegal immigrants if they feel it will make them more... Comp- w- 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 I, my mind just went right back to the sex change. Right. Uh, and make them comfortable more, comfortable and more uh, acclimated uh, to our culture. And that is what our culture has become. Yeah, look, that is so sad. Don't, don't, don't get me wrong, right? Because I know like when a lot of people come to this country, it's a thing where like you get one free name change. But now, you're, now, now you get... But, but, no, but, but, well, but wait, 
if you act now. <laughs> <laughs> no, but like literally, a name change, even when you have to get the socialist, whatever, yeah. and, and total will cost maybe a thousand dollars. You're talking about a full gender swap, and and understand that when we're talking about a full sex change, from the process of you declaring yourself an opposite gender, to going through hormone therapy. Mm. And the surgery, we're talking minimum two whole years, hundreds of thousands of dollars if we talk about the cost of the medicine, we're talking mm. about the appointments, this and the third, and we're willing to give that free, but we can't put somebody in no. a home. Well, That's from here. If you, if right? you, we, we can't give it free to someone who wants a sex, sex change, change from here. This is, you know, this, I, this I'm is, not against people doing what they want to do to feel for good for themselves. Take care of your I'm own not, I'm not even saying that it's for me or anything. Or that, but you want to do you, do you. Yeah. But take care of Americans first. Take care and of your home. we can take care of the world. I'm not even saying neglect the whole world, but we got to help us before we help everybody else. We're sending money now to Ukraine. We're sending money to Billions. Bangladesh. We're giving money to Israel. We're giving, we're giving, you know what I'm saying? But where's the money for us? Yeah, that's the problem. But, you know, with all those changes, like the homo, I mean, I'm sorry, the hormone um, uh, <laughs> therapy. <laughs> this guy over here. You know, all this money, like I seen a video where they said they sent so much money to Ukraine that they could have fixed the homeless problem twice. So, but you I, know, and, that's my thing. and then another, uh, another thing, not to cut you off, with all this stuff that they're giving, people dying here from diabetes and stuff like that but you're charging them uh -huh. but these guys came oh you got di you're diabetic here you go here's a year supply of, of, of needles and insulin and, and you know what i'm saying like and i'm again i can't help but stress like i'm not against helping people in general right i'm not i'm not against helping people i'm not against mm -hmm. helping others but we have so many issues of our own here yeah right like if you're telling like me, even cut the, the, the homeless, right. let's push the homeless aside because you know some of them want to be homeless. But just some of the, the people that are on welfare, mm -hmm. the people that are on, and I'm not talking about the people who abuse welfare, right? Yeah, they, yeah. they never get a job, they never go to, but I'm talking about that single parent who has three kids and they need some assistance and they can barely get it because somehow with a salary of 25000 uh, a year, they make too much money for government assistance despite having three kids. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like, and, that's, too, and too little to get anything right? else. That's the, that's the type of person I'm talking about. I'm talking mm -hmm. about that person who is making between 15000 and 25000 mm -hmm. for themselves. Even 30. I'll, I'll, I'll go up to 30. Uh, nah, because 30 when, is a little... When with gonna, three kids, I'm talking about. No, it's no, kind of no, hard. Forget that. With three kids, any kind of money uh, under 60K, 80K is, 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 not a, is, is, is rough. Yeah. Any assistance. But I'm talking about the individual. Like I'm talking about the 20 year old who's just getting their first job while they're trying to go to school and they're making less than 25000 mm -hmm. a year and won't get any help from nobody. There are a lot of people out here in this country from the West Coast to the East Coast, the, the, just above, the, the below the border of Canada and above the border of Mexico that are out here trying, struggling, mm -hmm. and no one's helping them, right? And, and more importantly than, than even the people who are just, you know, taking benefits and benefits and benefits or the people that don't have anything and couldn't help, but the person that's trying and is getting no help, they're, getting, they're losing money paying their taxes, and the government won't no, assist them. That's the you know, problem. We're talking about that person who's working, paying their taxes, but still can't afford health care. Mm -hmm. But nobody's taking care of their doctor's visit. But we can go and help these people. People right away. And um, don't get me wrong. They're coming from trial and tribulation themselves. Yeah. And then but the they're is, not from here. They're and not, the, you gotta, yep. you, and as soon as they come in, they're giving them uh, checkups. And every, everything. Listen, no. I'm, I'm, and that's not Like fair. I said, shout outs to Texas for doing what they're doing. You know what I mean? Put that trailers and put the, the barbed wires. Put... You, Put everything you have to do to keep a person out. Now, I know somebody, oh, but you're Latin too. Listen, there's, only, there's not only Latins coming in. There's everybody else coming in. They don't belong here. If you want, put them in your house. I want to see how long you're going to last. And, and you know what? I'm, I'm not even saying any of these people are bad. I'm not saying they just shouldn't even be here. But you don't, we don't know it's, that. It's, but no, but my thing is it's about accountability of services. Mm -hmm. and for me, than anything, right? What, what is it? Don't do to others what you can't do to do, yourself. You know what I'm saying? So. That, that's what I'm saying. If you're, gonna, if you're going to take care of them, right? Because I'm not even saying you should stop taking care. If you're going to take care of them, then you should be taking care of us the same. Mm -hmm. And if you're not going to treat us the same, then you treat them like you treat the rest of us, right? right. That's only We're, fair. For y'all people that are probably going to argue about it and, and comment below with all these negativity, 
putting it like this. If you're a kid, you're living in your house, your mom is giving you all the food and everything. Now all of a sudden a stranger comes in living in your house. You don't get nothing but the leftovers, if there is. But they get everything. They, they get your room. They get your bed. They get your food. You get the leftovers, if there is a leftover. How are you going to feel? That's how America is feeling right now. We're, we're not getting what we're supposed to get. And then we're the ones working and giving you the tax. But you're using our tax money that I just sweated and I just did for someone else. And, and, the best and part you didn't is, even ask me. But, but this is the best part for me. And this is for a lot of people. This is, this is even for people who are coming here, you know, uh, married from a foreign country, stuff like that. A lot of the time they, they invite you here and then they tell you, oh, you can't work for X amount of time. So now you're bringing in these people. And the ones who do want to work, right, who do want to find mm -hmm. a job, who do want to contribute, right, can't. Yeah. So why, why is everyone who is, who, who's putting in that effort, who can put in that effort, reaping no benefits, but then you're bringing all these people who you're not even allowing to mm -hmm. service your own country, right? Like, heck, when they let them across the border in Texas illegally, they were at least mowing their lawns afterwards and somebody mm, was exactly, getting from right? You know what I'm saying? You know, you know, somebody was it sounds, But they were working and they were earning. Now they come, they do nothing and they get everything. But that's the thing. The ones that used to cross the border, that five people every week, mm -hmm. were workers. Now it's everybody. I, and anybody. Everybody with their, with their service dogs and their, their issues. The <laughs> only thing about this stuff I can be fine with is the number of kids who are getting out of bad situations and getting free stuff. Yeah. I will always support anybody helping the kids. But the adults? Nah. Go get a job, puppy. You got to get a job. <laughs> you know, with that said, I'm going to end it with this. That wasn't happening when Trump was above. <laughs> That's all I got to say. Hey, we'll watch it. Uh, we'll check you guys out next week. Hope you have a good weekend. Um, hopefully it starts getting warmer here in New York and, uh, and every uh, little area towards. Because even Florida is getting hit with cold. Hey, and so. remember, anyone, if you have any comments, make sure that you continue the conversations. We start yes. here tonight on the social media pages. You can mm -hmm. check it out at the LDM show on Facebook if you want to comment back and forth. And let's get some interaction going on. We yes, hear yes. Your thoughts too. And also, uh, if you got any uh, podcast platforms, we basically on everyone. Um, listen to XY101. Um, again, if you are a crybaby or you're not an open-minded person, do not listen. It's not for those who are weak Matter of fact, put your headphones on because you're probably going to have people on the bus pissed off. <laughs> Put your headphones I mean, on. <laughs> it happens. But it is funny. We have a good time. Listen up. It's on uh, ldmradio.com, and then it'll show you all the other platforms. So you, whichever platform you prefer. And if we, you. you have a platform that we're not on, let us know. We'll get on it. So we we'll check you out next week. Uh, oh, I had next week's question here. Let me, let me pop it up real quick before we leave. It is, if, hello? No, you know, find it now. Yeah. Because you want it. All because you say something doesn't mean that your mate hears you. And we're going to talk about that Ooh. next week. Ladies, you it's need to tune in next week. about communication. Ladies need to tune in next week. Yes. Real.